difference between knockouts, no knockouts. That's the difference between superficial hits and internal hits. Everything starts with the mind. The mind is so powerful that it influences us all the way down to our health. You know, you don't want to do something, all of a sudden you develop a little headache, a little stomach ache, or you get so excited about something that you can't stop moving, you can't, you even talk a little faster, you pace a little bit. So it's all related to what's going on up here. In your martial arts technique, it, it applies in the sense that the, the more intent you have behind it, the easier the technique becomes. And, you know, as, as we get older, we look for doing things more efficiently because, you know, our strength and our speed and all these things start to diminish. So what's left is just accuracy and efficiency. But in, or, in order to achieve that, you have to have a really strong, powerful mind. The intent behind your technique has to be there for you. So one of the things that I'm really big into is studying human anatomy. So you see I have bones and muscles and acupressure charts and stuff like that. So the idea behind all that is to learn the body so well that when you look at hitting the torso or look at hitting the head or joint locking the body, you actually see the bones twisting, the ligaments stretching. You actually see the organ that you're about to strike. You actually see and pro project your mind to a place where you want to throw somebody. All of these things come into play right at the moment of, it, of, of a technique, of the explosion of action. So the more you study, the more you put into your mind the anatomy of what the human is all about, then the better technician you're going to become. It's that simple. You just have to do a little more. It's jumping down. I like that idea. But it's just basically learning how to sink your weight. A lot of the sword training that we do and weapons training that we do emphasize that, even kata, but more so weapons. There's just something about a weapon in your hand that makes you perform this way a little bit different than if you don't have it. So all I want you guys to do for right now is just relax, okay? Feel nice and relaxed. That's the idea to start with, okay? Nice and relaxed. Now from here, what I want you to do is first in your mind is bring it through your core all the way down through your feet into the earth, okay? So mentally you're already there. Then let it go. Okay? So again, first make a very conscientious effort to bring your mind through your center, down through your legs, down through the bubbling wells, into the earth, and then let it go, okay? That feeling, you want to be able to duplicate at will. So when you hit, you want to be able to, boom, it instantly drop and sink your weight. This puts your body weight behind your technique. So it's no longer just my arm swinging, or let's say the strength of my belt hitting. It's now all of that plus gravity. That gives you a lot more uh, effect for your technique based off of the mental intent. Okay, so since we will do this, where they step with the same foot and the same hand to push you or to control you, grab you. And it's usually the weak side doing it because they want their free hand to knock you out. Okay, so that's real. That to me is real, makes combative sense. So let's play off of that. So let's say he grabs with his left hand. I already know what's coming. So instead of me waiting, oh man, listen, hey, uh, I need to react instantly. Now there's a lot of cool things we can do from here, but applying the mind intent technique to it, we're just going to roll with that, okay? So all I want to do is learn to toe out, and then as I connect to his outside arm, I'm going to sink with my body. Now the idea behind this is to create a cross-motor reflex, where this punch, if he goes to launch it, it's not coming because I'm going to hit this arm and my mind is already through the floor. So he's going to go to where my mind is. This shoulder comes forward, this shoulder goes back. That's a cross motor reflex. So even if that punch is on its way, it gets yoinked back in the opposite direction. Now, if I just go here, okay, I'm hitting really hard. But look, without really hitting, all I did was sink my weight and then I did something else. What did I teach you guys about the forearms earlier? Use them like what? Swords, okay? Now, if we look at anatomy again, we understand that sinew covers muscle. Muscle covers nerves, tendons, ligaments, acupoints. Now, when the muscle is flexed, the, the seams, let's say, flare open like this. So what happens to the pressure points? <laughs> they get bigger. What happens to the nerves? They come to the surface. Everything gets closer to the surface when someone tightens up. So especially on grips, right here I know his breaker radialis is flared. Large intestine 10 is ready to be hit. Because of its placement on the, on the, uh, the skeleton, I know that when I hit the joint this way, it's going to bend the elbow, pull the shoulder forward, which is now going to start talking to this shoulder via the spine. 
It pulls in because the spine's already been contorted. This pulls back. All this is played out in my brain before I even do anything. I understand that. So when I hit, it's already there. So as he grabs and I toe out, this hand is going to start palm out this way, but then I cut. Now, not only do I cut this way, but then I release that way. And that's where my mind has been this whole time. So as I hit and sink, it's just going to create a quick drop. So as he grabs, see, it's that simple. Cross motor reflex, I use that downward gravity motion and well anatomically placed strikes. This is monkey proof. When I say that is, you don't need to go, okay, let's see, I'm going to, no, just aim anywhere around this elbow joint and you will get the results you need with this cut. If I don't cut, tighten up strong. Okay, now, without even hitting, cut. It's that simple. So you want to make sure that you're employing all of these little things, but most importantly, the mind intent behind it. Single lapel grab, you're going to start with the left hand forward so that the person can throw a punch with the right. It's real easy for me to step, but it takes too long. So I just sink and toe out. Okay, a lot of the first moves in your kata are exactly that. It's like yokus, everything deals with that kind of footwork. So here, I'm going to take this inside hand and trap. But when I trap, I don't want to thumb it. I want to meat hook it. So that when I hit, I don't, he doesn't let go. Doesn't let go. And I go, uh oh. And now we're here. Okay, so he gave it to me. I keep it. Boom. And I drop. And as I do that, my mind is already down there. And that's where I want to put him. Okay, those of you guys that are going to take the rod, make sure you grit your teeth so you don't get whiplash and you don't bite your tongue. Okay, let's try it out. Reach in, grab the chin, come back to this side. <laughs> Here. And then come right back around. Trap the opposite shoulder. This is where your break would occur, okay? You can move back to here <laughs> and then start playing the whole game again. But the idea is to just take the, this opportunity to tie it in. One, and then just come. I can go this way or just bring it back around and trap that shoulder or switch back this way and then, whoa, get that same technique again. Toe out, get your reaction, put your mind in it. Say, well, you know what? I want you to stay up. So the hand that's trapping the wrist comes over top and this one comes underneath. I can pop from there, but I'll transition back this way and trap to here. This is a break. Ooh. Or I can transition back to here, which you guys were doing earlier today. Okay.